LinkedIn is a lead generation machine once you have your um, profile and your content strategy sorted, for sure. Welcome to the Content 10X Podcast. Podcast. The show where content creators learn how to harness the power of content repurposing. And And now, your host, Amy Woods. Hello and welcome to the Content 10X Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Woods, and this week we have a wonderful guest on the show. So my guest is Louise Brogan, and we're going to be talking about LinkedIn. So Louise works with businesses and entrepreneurs to help them understand and use online marketing to boost their business. And her focus is on LinkedIn. She's a LinkedIn trainer, a LinkedIn consultant, and also a podcaster and international speaker. So Louise, welcome to the show. Thank you, Amy. I'm so happy to be back on your podcast. This is a lovely treat. Well, that's I was going to say that. So I say welcome back to the show, actually, because you are a returning guest. So you were Yay. you were on episode 33 and we wow. talked all about repurposing webinars, actually, didn't we? So yeah. slightly different. Um, yes. That was way back because this is going to be episode one for something now. So um, yeah, Amazing. crazy. Yes. <laughs> And so, so since obviously a lot's changed for you um, in that time, which I guess is is uh, well a, a couple of years now. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you've really kind of niched down and pivoted into LinkedIn. So, uh, what I'd love to know firstly, really, is um, you know why did you decide to kind of you know really hone in on LinkedIn? Well, there's a few different reasons. Um, I I do believe that your business thrives when you actually focus down into a particular niche whether that's a niche of the people you work with or a niche of the topic that you are industry or area that you're working in and I was working with some coaches and they actually said you know why don't you look at doing um look at look at LinkedIn because we were talking through the different pieces of work that I've been doing but honestly Amy I think one of the biggest reasons is because before I was teaching people about all all of the social media platforms and one of the biggest reasons I, I focused on LinkedIn is because when you're on LinkedIn, everybody's on there because they want to connect with businesses, clients, potential collaborations. Maybe you're on there because you're a speaker. Um, whereas the other social media platforms, you're, it's not the primary reason that you're on those platforms. So it's much easier, I find, to find um, good quality clients on LinkedIn, that doesn't mean that you don't you know, meet people on Facebook who may become a client of yours, but they're not necessarily on Facebook because they're looking for support with whatever it is that you do. Whereas on LinkedIn, they're, I say they're in a business frame of mind. Um, and actually it was, a, it was tentative steps into niching down, I have to say, because I am one of those people who doesn't just leap off cliffs and doing things. Like I, when I started my business, I worked for a year before I quit my job. Um, It kind of shows you my risk averse nature when it comes (laughs) to business. So I tried it out and I just realized the more time I spent on LinkedIn, the easier it was to win business. Um, And I thought, right, let's give it a go. And it's been brilliant. Really good. And do you, um, as in your kind of LinkedIn training and LinkedIn consultancy, do you mainly work then with B2B businesses? Yes. So it would be um, people like coaches and consultants would be a great... um, client market area for me and also I kind of have two strands to the business so there are the the individuals the coaches consultants and speakers who want to really raise their profile and use LinkedIn to find business um, and maybe speaking events and then there are the SMEs who need their whole they know they should be on LinkedIn but they don't really know how to use it um, and they bring me in it might be one person in the senior team who recognizes the value in LinkedIn and they'll bring me in to train um, their their whole team say their sales team or their senior team on how to use LinkedIn as a benefit for the whole company it's really interesting I think it's it's great to see how LinkedIn has evolved so much so mm. I totally resonate with what you're saying in terms of people being on the platform with more purpose and more intention. Mm -hmm. Um, I find that it is the one platform that when I speak to people, um, they feel like sometimes they say they get Facebook and I get Twitter. Um, You know, I really get Instagram, but then LinkedIn is the one where people say, sometimes that they don't get it or yeah. that they, um, you know, they need to, they do need to learn it more and they don't really understand how to, 
yes. to, to work it. So, you know, I, it, I think people are recognizing more, but for some reason feeling they need to kind of get it more. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to dig in really with you. So obviously Content 10X podcast, we talk about a lot about content and everything like that and content repurposing and maximizing content. But um, firstly, before we talk about content, I'd love to dig into this. I think sometimes barrier people have of making sure that they have themselves set up properly so they're mm. and, and not pages but the profile so firstly when you are trying to maximize your profile how how would you recommend that you go about writing that profile for an individual okay so and you're absolutely right because the, the profile is your foundation on LinkedIn and yeah. because um, you could be putting out amazing content but when someone clicks through to your profile and it's not fully optimized, then you're really, you're missing a trick. Mm-hmm. So there's a, there's quite a few key pieces. Um, number one, make sure you have a recent headshot for your photograph um, so that if I met you, I'd recognize you. <laughs> not that one from high school 20 years ago there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, recent headshot, yeah. Uh, like head and shoulders with just you in the photograph works really well. Um, looking approachable as well so that you know because we do we connect visually far quicker than we than reading any words so looking approachable in your photograph and um, then writing your headline so your headline is if you didn't write your headline LinkedIn would pull this as your current role or whatever's top of your list of experiences so for example um, if I didn't write my own headline it might say um, Louise Brogan software engineer or Louise Brogan, um, accountant. So by writing that headline, and you've got about 200 um, characters here, you can really stand out um, on LinkedIn by writing a headline that really shows what it is that you do specialize in. Um, If you work in a particular area or particular industry, put that in your headline. The reason the headline is so important is not just because um, if someone goes to your profile and reads it there, but if you're commenting on, so if Amy writes a post about today's podcast um, and I comment underneath it, people see, will see my name and they will see my headline. And you want a headline that makes your ideal client or potential connection click through to check out your profile. So I talk about writing a clickable headline. And that's different for everybody because everyone might have something different to focus on. So yours could be, you know, working with coaches and consultants, or it could be content specialist or LinkedIn consultant. So writing a headline that stands out um, and attracts your ideal client, first of all. What could I jump in there? So what yes. would be an example of a what would be a really terrible headline and what what's a really great one? Like what mistakes do people make with, <laughs> with headlines? <laughs> <laughs> okay so a really terrible headline would be not yeah. having not literally not having written one okay yeah so, so it then just it pull- just pulls like you said something potentially really inappropriate right yes. yeah mm. or um well i mean you have to behave professionally on linkedin as well this is the other thing it, you know you're not sharing what you had for lunch or that you're going for coffee with people you are it is a more professional network i mean it's people say oh it's it's boring it's not boring at all um, like every social media platform, you, your feed, your news feed is filled through for the people that you follow and co- are connected with. So find some interesting people to follow. Um, but make sure that you do keep it professional because it is a professional networking site. Um, so some people pepper their, pro- their headlines with emojis. And that really, to me, is really depends on your personality um, mm-hmm. and your, bra- your personal brand online. So if you were, I don't know, like a, a consultant for clients, you might have client emojis in your headline. I haven't seen that one on LinkedIn. <laughs> um, but one that's full of like little stars, to me, doesn't look quite right. But maybe having one or two emojis might fit some people's headlines and business brand personality. Um, Good ones I've seen. So today, actually, I saw a brilliant one today. A lady connected with me from Nigeria. She is a physicist with an interest in astronomy and STEM. And she, it says in her headline, it said she's a STEMinist. (laughs) Uh, It just jumped out at me because I've never seen that before. So something that catches the person that you want to connect with. And that just, 
everything about her profile and her headline just jumped out at me. And I thought, yes, I definitely want to be connected to you um, because I'm, I'm interested in that. And also it's unique. I've never seen anybody call themselves a steminist before. So mm. that's the kind of profile that makes that sticks out for me. Okay. Yeah. So just making sure you stick out and um, mm. it doesn't have to be a job title as such, or but it doesn't no. have to say currently looking for ro- a role or something either. Just, yeah, just something that will take people's interests. Yeah. Yes. Cool. I'm, I'm actually not sure that I, uh, the ones that say currently looking for opportunities, I think I would not put that in your headline. I would, okay. I would focus on creating content that shows um, your knowledge and expertise and connecting with people who may have opportunities for you rather than focusing on that as your headline. Yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next underneath your headline is your about summary. And this is, this is really underused by a lot of people. Um, So you've got about 2000 words in here and top tips for this section are writing it in a way that the reader is interested. So making it more about how you can help the reader as opposed to being all about you. Um, Writing in the first person. So, you know, I am a, as opposed to Louise is a. Um, Having lots of white space in here. So don't have a big, big chunk of text. Break it up into maximum three line paragraphs, but really two to three line paragraphs. I like bullet points in here. Um, but again, you know, I've seen somewhere there's two lines of text and there's literally 17 bullet points and that's it. So write it in a way that we want to read it. And when we've read it, so your headline's being clickable. I've clicked through to read your about section. And what you want, the reaction you want to that about section is that the people you want to be connected with reach out to connect with you as a result of what they've read, basically. Um, I also would include a call to action in this section. So whether that is um, if you want to connect with me or, you know, if you want to email me or whatever, whatever way you want somebody to contact you, include that in this section as well. And I I guess an important point about the about section is it's all relevant to this moment in time, isn't it? It's Mm. it's telling people right now. So, you know, it's interesting and I've probably been guilty of it myself actually where people feel that it's a bit more like a CV where you have to say, your entire career history. So, you know, yeah. I'd, I'd be mentioning that I run Content to Next, but also talking about all the things I did, you know, in my corporate career and, you know, mm-hmm. previously of this and previously of that. But um, am I right in thinking really that, you know, if that's not relevant to what you want to connect with people right now about, mm-hmm. then you don't need to talk about previous businesses that you've run or career history, anything like that? No, definitely not no. because you've got the experience section underneath where people can check out your previous experience in there. But LinkedIn is very much not an online CV or resume. I mean, it really isn't. You want that about section to demonstrate what you are really good at, that the right person connects with you as a result, or even better, like the person that connected with me this morning and um, just said, I, I really want to know what your serv- hear more about your services. You know, that's, that is what you want. It's, it's a, LinkedIn is a lead generation machine once you have your um, profile and your content strategy sorted for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes complete sense. And yeah, your experience section, as you said, that can be if people want to dig into your experience, but that's not the key thing, is it? No. Mm -hmm. Then the bit underneath the about section is a relatively new part and it's called the featured section. Mm -hmm. And again, this is really underused, but not maybe people don't really haven't really seen it yet. But you can put in you can um, feature your blog posts, your articles. Um, your own posts on LinkedIn, your YouTube videos, uh, if you've been in the the national press, um, award ceremonies, speaker reels, all of that stuff can go in the featured section. And it's it's a really, it's a lovely addition to the profile because it's like a big color block as you're scrolling down the screen um, underneath. So the about section is mainly text. um, And then underneath you've got the featured section and it's like a little reel of colors um, so for example under mine I've got my articles I've written for social media examiner and I've got links to some of my YouTube videos and um, teaching people how to do things on LinkedIn um, so it's a way to feature to highlight literally highlight the things that you want to be highlighted for so it's a really nice new section I think 
Yeah, it's it's brilliant, isn't it? I've got, I think I kind of tried to back up things that I said. So I said I was a speaker. So I put mm-hmm. in a link to me, you know, one of the videos of me speaking. Yes. You know, I said I had a podcast. So I put a link to a podcast episode, mm-hmm. you know, an article, things like that. And we also created some quote graph, uh, some testimonials of clients into nice colorful graphics and then mm-hmm. put them as um featured content as well yeah, so people could see testimonials mm-hmm. so but you're right it's quite underutilized isn't it when you go on a lot of profiles people don't use it and it's you know potentially people just don't realize but it's a yes. great little bit of real estate on your linkedin page isn't it i think so yeah i think it, i think it really is and people will say to me so i do workshops and stuff online and people say, oh, I don't have that section yet. But if you scroll back up the top, LinkedIn will say, add add a profile section. And if you click on there, you'll find it if you haven't got it in there already. Oh, good um, tip. Thanks, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, just a little break from this podcast episode to ask you a question. Would you like one single place that you can go to that provides you with everything you need to be able to implement the best practices in content repurposing for your video content, your podcast episodes, and your social media content today? To help you get more value from the content that you create, get more time back and help you reach more people than you ever thought possible. If so, then you are going to love the Content 10X Toolkit. The toolkit is full of video tutorials, templates, checklists, swipe files, step-by-step guides and more that shows you how to repurpose your content in the best ways possible today. No more Googling, no more figuring it out yourself. We provide you with everything that you need to become a content repurposing pro. If this sounds like something that would interest you, then go check out the Content 10X Toolkit at content10x.com forward slash toolkit. Okay, I'm back to this week's episode. And then underneath that, you've got your experience section, which which is where you list roles that you've done before. And for this, when I work with clients, we go through previous roles and we don't add them all because they're not all relevant to what it is that you do now especially if you are work like if you're like you and I Amy, and you're working for your own business and um, because you're not applying for jobs it doesn't matter that there was a, a gap when I went backpacking you know around Australia and New Zealand at 25 that doesn't matter because it's irrelevant to what I'm doing now and um, likewise roles that you might have done when you were a student or the first jobs you came out of university and did those don't need to be in there if they're not relevant or relate to what you're doing now so don't don't worry about gaps and don't think that you need to include all the roles that you've done before. And actually a, a good tip here is take them out because when someone searches on LinkedIn, and so for example, um, I was an IT project manager for 11 years. Now that is in my profile because it backs up my corporate experience, but I will still be found on searches for project management, whereas I don't want to be found for under project management, I want to be found under LinkedIn consultancy and um, maybe podcasting or speaking. So if you have had a big career switch, say from accountancy into law, you don't really want the accountancy bit highlighted too much because LinkedIn, you know, the search will scroll through that and will, will show you in search results for people who are looking for somebody in accountancy. So that's another reason why not to dwell on those previous roles too much in the experience section. Yeah, it's, um, it, I guess it's kind of what we're, you know, about to move on to content and mm. talking about what you want to be known for. It's what you, like you said, it's like your, it's SEO in a way, isn't it? And um, yes. the more you put about something that you don't want to be known for, the more likely you'll get found for it. So it makes sense. So you, it, it, in terms of, you know, you've, you've, you kind of mastered that. You've got the great profiles, you've got the headline, the good image of yourself, the about section experience, everything's going well. And now you want people to find you. So mm-hmm. I know there's lots we could talk about with regards to outreach and um, mailing people and all those strategies. But what I'd really like to dig into is the content side of things. Um, mm-hmm. So much we could talk about with LinkedIn, but I'd love to kind of dig into what you see from a content perspective. So, Mm -hmm. you know, people listening in now are most likely kind of working on some aspect of either podcasting, video, live stream, blogging, and looking at ways that they can make the most of that content over on LinkedIn. So, um, what I guess firstly, what is now we've said, you know, it's really branched out different types of content. What mm. type of content do you see working really well on LinkedIn at the moment? 
The content that works the best on LinkedIn is text only. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, text only posts. But so as a podcaster myself, how can I use text only posts on LinkedIn to get people interested in my podcast? It's all about starting conversations around whatever the topic the podcast is for that week, for example. So say I have a podcast coming out um, about, so I interviewed somebody recently, um, Amanda Webb, about digital marketing strategy. So I did some text posts about digital marketing strategy and ask people questions. Do you, do you have one? Do you have a strategy? And um, what do you think you should include in your strategy? And people love to answer. Um, people like to be asked questions and they like to give their opinions on things. So that conversation can get started. And then maybe a couple of days later, then I would share a link to the actual podcast episode. Now, text only posts do the best on LinkedIn, but that doesn't mean that I only put text only out there. So I do, I do like to have a mix of content. I think part of many things, it keeps people interested in the stuff that you're sharing so I have text only posts. I have LinkedIn have their own um, options. There's a great thing called LinkedIn polls, um, which get a lot of engagement. So um, running a poll and saying, you know, you could do a poll about digital marketing strategy since we're on that topic. You know, do you have one? Do you not have one? Um, or other? And then we say other, please, please comment below. Mm. And people like to interact with those posts because it's quick and easy. Um, then we also have video uploads onto LinkedIn and with like other areas on the internet, absolutely with captions added so people can make out what you're saying. Um, I was on a call yesterday and one of the attendees just, he had his camera turned off and he says, I'm, I'm on the sofa beside my wife. She's watching TV. And that is really very common way for people to access content online. So make sure for video that you have your captions yeah um and linkedin are bringing out stories which i'm really intrigued to see what they're going to be like but if you want to see how they will look you can add a video directly from the linkedin app on your phone and once you finish video so if you're doing a piece to camera once you finish recording it you can add in little stickers um which are going to be like the linkedin stories okay kind of make it um, look like a story now, except just uploads as a video. And then we have, I have access to LinkedIn Live, which is very exciting. Um, It's quite quite tough to get LinkedIn Live, so I'm like over the moon about it. (laughs) And, you know, with... Like other content, I'm, I'm, it's the one thing that I am very consistent with. So I decided that I'm going to have a weekly LinkedIn Live. It's going to be on Friday lunchtime, UK time. And that's by doing that consistently, I'm hoping to build, I can only, I've only had it for about a month, um, to build up a regular audience who will engage with that. But what I've done is I've connected that through to the podcast content for the week. So it's a theme. So the podcast comes out on the Wednesday and then... Ideally, my guest comes on to the LinkedIn live show to kind of dive deeper into the content that we were discussing on the podcast on the video on the Friday. So it's a whole, well, you know yourself, Amy, it's a, this is why you create a content. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's such a system really that you have to get in place for all of this stuff. Yeah. And I think, you know, like digging into a lot of what you've said, um, mm-hmm. there's, there's lots that you're doing in terms of maximizing the thought process that you go through with the content and the content itself. So as you said, you know, you're putting content out beforehand, before things like the podcast go out. So you are already, you know, in a way that's kind of repurposing what's to come, that initial mm-hmm. post and polls and get people interested and the core content, the podcast coming out and then you're doing the live stream to dig into it deeper and it's wonderful you know if you're linking them in terms of asking people who listen to the podcast to come over and Mm -hmm. and, uh, interact live I mean I love that I love the link between things like pre-recorded videos and podcasts and live streaming because you know you just provide that access and that extra authenticity transparency and also community building you know like you said I think to really rock with the live stream and you need to do what you're doing which is turn up at a day and time every week and try and build that up over time because Mm -hmm. that's when you build that community that start getting used to going and coming along to the live stream um I guess there's a uh, you must be finding that it's about finding that sweet spot of the the right day and time because 
Yes. I, I don't know why. I just kind of particularly think with a LinkedIn audience, um, you do need to get that that timing right because um, to be able to turn up to a live stream, you do, you know, you need to be present, don't you? And you need to be in a place that you can have the, have the volume on and see what's going yes. on in a video. So it's a little bit different to the other forms of content. But yeah, you I mean, you said you're only in a, a month or so in, but how are you, how are you finding the LinkedIn live? Oh, I honestly, I love it because of the interaction you get from yeah. the audience. I, pro, I like at the minute it's 1230 and I'm, I think I might have to shift it slightly because I do have quite a large American audience. And I, like I had a Canadian on last week, um, Amy Groob, who is a Canadian lawyer. And she had, she was on live at 730 in the morning for her in Ottawa. And then I realized that if I had somebody from um, West Coast America, They'd have to get up about <laughs> four thirty, oh, whatever it is. Know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> about half four in the morning. So mm. nobody's going to do that. So I, I need to kind of, re- I might have to rethink that to be slightly later on the Friday. But I went for lunchtime on a Friday UK time because I think that for the UK audience, that's a really good time. People are starting to think about the weekend and maybe a bit more relaxed and maybe like joining into a twenty-minute live chat is something that they could um, get on board with. Um, but definitely, I, so I'm using StreamYard software, which means that you can pull up comments from the people who are watching onto screen. Um, and you get such good interaction from people as a result of that. Um, and, it, you know, it's tricky too, because you're kind of fiddling what you're trying to talk to your mm-hmm. guests, look at the camera, but you're checking your screen to see if there's a comment to pull up on screen as well. And but that's the joy of live, isn't it? Nobody expects it to be perfect. And um, we did have a slight hiccup one day when when my son, because you know we, we've got homeschooling at the moment, my 10-year-old came in to get paper from the printer and was kind of like, you know, being all, shh, I'm, I'm tiptoeing in here, mum. I was thinking, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then left the door open. So the dog came in and I was like, oh, oh no. Um, and then you this hear is... the voice from the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I wondered how LinkedIn Live was going to go when it first came out, as we all did. And it's still, mm. you know, it's still rolling out, isn't it? It seems yes. like, it, I feel like I've been saying that for ages. You know, everyone will get it soon. It's still invitation. Mm. It's apply and get it, get asked. Not It was invitation only. Now you have to apply. Yes. Um, but they're still holding it very close to their chest, aren't they? Like, you know, yes. not a lot of people. There's still a small amount on, which means if you are on it, then do make the most of it, I think. Mm. And um, if you don't have LinkedIn Live, uh, you just, you basically you need to apply, don't you? And I'll put notes, I'll put a link in the show notes for this episode with the exact place that you go to, to mm. apply. Um, and if you don't, you know, get through, you don't really hear back as such unless you've been successful. So I mm. guess you can kind of wait a little bit and well, well I, 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 I applied yeah. four times, Amy, before I got it. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and look at you, you're, you know, LinkedIn, um, you know, consultant specialist. You're helping people, you know, succeed on LinkedIn, but still you had to apply yes. four times. So it just goes to show, doesn't it? Um, I just wanted to quickly circle back that you said that you see the very first, that you said the, the content that you really see getting the most engagement, funnily enough, being the um, the text-only posts. Mm-hmm. Do you see there to be a difference between a very short form, you know, one, two line text only post, or is it more the posts that we see a lot more probably on LinkedIn than other uh, social platforms where they're almost kind of like mini blogs? Mm. So I, the other, the other written form on LinkedIn, of course, is the articles, um, which I am a big oh, fan yeah. of. And a lot of people dismiss articles, but I think they're really good in terms of giving you good credibility on your profile. Um, and you know, it's the longer piece that you can write real thought leadership on. I think those are really valuable. Mm. And I do still get comments on articles and I also repurpose. That is my probably my biggest repurposing that I've always done on LinkedIn is pulling something out of one of my articles and resharing it into my newsfeed. And I always get comments on those. So don't write off articles. I think they're very valuable on LinkedIn. And um, also the, you can repurpose them as your blog post. So it's kind yeah. of win-win everywhere. But I see these longer story posts on LinkedIn. And I wonder how long it took somebody to come up with how to write them. Um, and I, I don't really... I personally don't use them. Um, 
I'm more inclined to use, I use my LinkedIn posts in two ways. One way is to, have you seen this featured section? Here's how you should use it. And so it's like giving value to my audience. And the other one is actually to ask them what they, you know, so at the moment I'm writing a post, uh, a blog post for my own website on the difference between company pages and personal profiles on LinkedIn. And I've asked my audience, what do they think of them? Do they have a company mm. page? And what are their questions about them? And that those posts do phenomenally well for me and also help me to understand where my audience are with um, the things that they want help on. Um, so there's the whole giving value and then there's the other piece where I'm ask, literally asking my audience, you know, and what do you think of this? Do you, you know, what are your opinions on using this? Are you using this? And people, like I said earlier, people love to give their opinion on stuff and it gets brilliant engagement. So as opposed to giving a life lesson story about, you know, the day when I was younger um, and something happened to my dog and I learned a big life lesson and turning it into a business lesson. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a good enough writer for that kind of thing. <laughs> I don't think. Yeah. I, I've seen so many of them. They kind of, they don't really resonate with me too much. No, I think um, I completely agree with you on that. And I think, you know, again, that is, you know, every, every platform has their own kind of uniqueness in terms of so many different areas. And that's something with LinkedIn that mm. um, you do get, I, I couldn't agree more that I find them sometimes a bit tedious, I suppose. And, and I feel like, I mean, there's, there's so much we could talk about. We've talked, you've provided so much kind of great tips and advice on getting a really good profile set up and, you know, really good um, food for thought in terms of the different types of content and what to create. Um, uh, we could talk about connections, outreach, you know, how, how all that, but the, so the, much. the time is the time. I think we need a, a part two, don't we? But um, yeah. just as, as one uh, two two final questions. First mm-hmm. one is um, just, you know, if somebody is getting started on LinkedIn, um, just finding the fee, mm-hmm. what's the one biggest mistake that you think you see people do when they're just getting started? And you may have already said it, so don't worry to repeat yourself, but what's the one biggest mistake that people should avoid when getting started? Honestly, the biggest mistake people do make is lurking because they're scared, not knowing what to post. Okay. And just, you know, you know, your, you know, whoever's listening, you know, your stuff, you know, you're good at what you do and don't let other people in your field put you off because you're not writing for your peers. You're writing for your clients and customers that you're able to help. So just get started by writing your first post and don't, don't overthink it. Yeah. And don't worry about putting yourself out there and don't yeah. overthink it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so um, where should uh, people go to, to um, connect and find out more um, from you, Louise? Oh, definitely come and connect with me on LinkedIn. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that is obvious. And we'll yeah. obviously we'll put the, um, we'll put the link to your LinkedIn profile and everything in the show yes. notes. I'm sure you're very easy to find as well, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> so, a killer well, headline. <laughs> I do have, um, I do have a, like a, a lovely 10, I say it's lovely because I'm so proud of it. A 10 page guide to help you figure out um, what kind of posts you can put up, up and what kind of activity you can do on a daily and weekly basis on LinkedIn. So if your listeners would be interested mm-hmm. That's at socialbni.com forward slash download if they want to grab a copy of that. I am sure that they will. So I will provide you all with the link to that as well in the show notes. (laughs) Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming back on for a second time. It's been a really great conversation. Um, You know, can't wait to see everyone rocking it on LinkedIn. So if you are listening to this episode now, please go connect with Louise and drop her a note and let her know what you've action you've taken as a result of listening to this podcast episode that'd be fantastic brilliant thank you so much Amy it's always a pleasure speaking to you Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that discussion. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoy the show, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe if you haven't already and even leave a review. That would be really appreciated as well. Now to let you know, my new book, Content 10X, More Content, Less Time, Maximum Results is now available to purchase. You can get that over on Amazon or if you head to content10x.com forward slash book. I'm getting loads of really great reviews coming in from the book already. So thanks so much to those of you who have already purchased it and left reviews. It really is the ultimate guide to content repurposing and you can discover 
all sorts of tips and tricks for how to repurpose pretty much any type of content in the book. If you're interested in our fully end-to-end content repurposing service, then head on over to content10x.com as well, where you can find out lots about that. And also give me a follow over on social media. I'm at content10x on all of the social media platforms. So again, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.